Today on Nation, the Window Cleaners Podcast, we're going to talk about words of wisdom. So I'm just some guy with a microphone, but I got a few things that I want to make sure that you know are my words of wisdom. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, if it's your first time here, take a look around. It's a podcast comes out every single week. It's everywhere podcasts are available, and of course on YouTube also. And if you're one of the nation, if you're one of the cool kids, somebody who watches every week, you give me the thumbs up on YouTube. You make sure to comment on everything, and most importantly, you buy your supplies through me. What's up? You are one of the cool kids. You are the nation. High five to you. It is because of you. I get to buy name brand floss. That was the last one that somebody let me know. But if you do want to buy your supplies from me, that would be absolutely amazingly epic. My number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. So call me or text me. Put everything in your cart. Say, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Run it. It costs you nothing extra. I get credit for it, and that's how I make my cheddar. Also, at the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code for a discount if you order through me. So... Make sure to check that out. It's absolutely awesome. Either way, I got a couple quick shout outs. I want to say what's up to Alan Brown. What's up to Ryan Fuster. Uh, I haven't given you a shout out in a while. And uh, Grant uh, Becerra. What's going on, man? Probably messed up your last name, so I'm sorry. Either way, what's going on, you guys? Thanks to everybody, by the way. I don't give shout outs. I can't give shout outs to everybody. Not even uh, uh, scratch the surface on the shout out side. But a lot of you buy always through me, and I should be giving everybody a shout-out, but it would be the longest episode ever, so uh, I apologize. Keep going, though. I'm going to give you a shout-out eventually, I promise. Uh, But anyway, so I always preface shows with I'm just some dude with a mic, and that's literally what it is. I just, I'm not anything special. I'm not anything, uh, I don't know more than you. I don't, any of that stuff. But... I thought it'd be a fun time to kind of give you words of wisdom because on my Instagram page, by the way, if you're not following it, uh, check it out, WCR Nation uh, on uh, Instagram. But uh, I did a post and it was it was a uh, um, uh, pro tip. Just don't use your customer's bathroom because not always does the toilet flush. And I thought it was fun because um, it really did open some things up. And some people had some really good things to say. By the way, check it out again. I had to read. It's Jersey WCR Nation is my uh, Instagram, whatever. Uh, Also, I'm on Facebook. Follow that. And then I also have a private YouTube channel. Uh, Check that out. Uh, Those are usually clips. And then we post all the uh, morning meetings and stuff in there. Anyway. And I thought it was fun. I, I really did think it was fun. Uh, there has been some really interesting, interesting lessons learned the hard way. And you guys did awesome last week, but I want you, if you're watching on YouTube right now, tell me the best story. Tell me the best story you have on when you learned a lesson the hard way. I want to hear it. Uh, and everybody else wants to hear it. We all like uh, poking fun at each other. Um, and hopefully <laughs> learning that lesson because somebody else screwed it up. But that's what we're talking about today. And I'm going to start right off with the uh, don't use a client's bathroom. And uh, now this came sort of from Dumb and Dumber. Uh, We have some stories on it. But if you remember the movie, uh, he's about to go on a date and he goes and he's just got just stomach gut rot. And he goes and uses the bathroom and the bathroom doesn't work. She goes, hey, don't worry about flushing the toilet. It doesn't work. And he just destroyed it, right? Okay. So... That's actually a really big truth in people's homes. You don't know if the toilet works, but most importantly, if a clog happens, now you have to go to the homeowner and be like, hey, um, can I have... It's just awful. It's just awful. You ruin the house. There's a lot of bad things that can go on. I did hear a story of one uh, tech that somehow clogged the toilet and it just was running water was running all over he didn't catch that it clogged and it was like leaking through the ceilings how they and it was like thousands of dollars of damage don't use a customer's bathroom i always tell my guys 
When you're driving in between jobs, stop and go to the bathroom at the gas station, get your beverages or whatever, if you're getting a snack or that's fine. Stop then. I would 100% rather you do that than um, ever try to uh, use a customer's bathroom because it's going to end poorly. Now, obviously, if you got to go, you know, number one, I I, th- I think that's okay, and I've done it personally. But the other thing is, is you got your belt on, you know, you're still kind of just, you know, in the customer's house. It's very hard. So try your darndest not to. If you got bathroom stories, do tell me too, because I think they're just absolutely interesting and super uh, retching, just kind of like cringeworthy stuff. Uh, and I did have a guy one time. And he should have gone home for the day, and I know he wasn't doing very well, and he just uh, he was just kind of uh, sick with something, and uh, we stopped on the way, you know, it was the office beforehand, and we get to this customer's house, and it happens again. I'm like, dude, after this job, just go home, you know. Well, he goes in, and um, <laughs> it was uh, very noticeable by the uh, uh, scent. We're getting a little off topic, I know, but the homeowner was this little old lady, and it was so funny. She just knew it was driving him crazy. His face was red, and she was just, oh, my gosh, oh, did you kill a goat in there? Look, she just, it was hilarious. She was a little over the Danish or Norwegian woman, and it was just absolutely fun. Sometimes you can have fun with being, you know, learning lessons, but it's awful. Tell me if it's something you've done in your story. Uh, But the next one I want to talk about from stories that I've heard of and done is don't give a client's dog snacks. Now, before you go and send me all these emails and everything telling me how dumb I am and you give clients snacks all the time and you've never had a problem, yeah. I have crossed the street lots of times. I've never been hit by a car. Now, if I cross the street in a busy street or I keep crossing the street, eventually maybe I get hit by a car. It doesn't mean that it's safe. Right? It doesn't mean that you can't get hit by a car. It just means I've been lucky up to this point. That's where this one comes into play. And the reason is, and I'm not talking about like gluten-free. By the way, by the way, we have had uh, a um, high-end dog uh, pet. It was like a boutique, I guess. Like you could buy like hand-baked snacks for your dog. And people would bring these little, like my dog is... Uh, I had, there was a lady that went in and she had two dogs and they were not related and both of them were gluten sensitive in a dog. Let me just rephrase. Let me, let me just, let me just point something out on dogs. Dogs eat trash and bones and eat other animal poop. Like dogs are not gluten, they're not gluten sensitive. They don't have, uh, he always gets a, a bubbly tummy when he, Dogs are dogs. Like, if he downs an entire garbage can, yeah, maybe he might get sick. But just if your dog is gluten sensitive, it's not a thing. I'm sorry. But anyway, so we're at this thing. The lady says that I'm not talking about crazy people who think their dogs, uh, you know, have to. I've, I've heard it all. What I'm talking about is that some pet treats have things in them that can uh, kill a dog. And it has happened in the past. Uh, some dogs are allergic to things. Maybe you don't know. Um, you know, a dog could choke on something. You know, it could choke on anything. It doesn't necessarily because of the treat that you picked or anything. But the reason is, is that a dog is like a person's family. That's like next to their kids, right? If you give them something and that animal ends up choking on it or or, or gets them super sick, I've heard all the stories. They're going to be not only amazingly disappointed at you, but you could get in trouble for it. I heard a story, and this is, gosh, now probably eight years ago. I tried to find it online. And I couldn't find it. Um, and I believe it was a window cleaner or a pressure washer that had this. And it was someone who gave a treat, always had treats in the car. And when he'd get to a job, he'd give the animals a treat so they'd be friendly to him and let them work. Something on that, and it would have been something he got into or something else, not even has it having to do with the treat, but the lady assumed it was the treat. Uh, they were suing him for killing their dog. Something had happened to the dog, and if it was, they blamed it on this treat that they gave, that the guy has given him. And I don't know that it ever even went to court or did anything. I think it was just one of those things. He was asking, hey, how, you know, 
what can I do? What possibilities? Is this even true? You know, is this is this something that can even happen? You know, can they even sue me or is this going to get thrown off? There's a lot of things. But the reason that you have to be careful is as soon as you get a logo, right? As soon as you get a logo on your shirt or uh, graphics on your car or any of that stuff, people instantly think, that you are just an easy target for millions and millions of dollars. Now, don't be scared. Don't don't think that this is going to really happen every time to everybody because it doesn't. But it can. It's the same reason why people, you know, may go out there and try to hit a commercial vehicle or blame a commercial vehicle for something specific because we've all heard, heard the stories. You know, we've all heard those that uh, so and so was hit by a UPS truck and made seven million. Do- it's still a vehicle. It doesn't mean you're going to make more money one way or the other, but people see that. So having that, if they think they can blame you for anything, they will. And the reason that you, you can believe that is how many times have people tried to blame you for scratches that were already on the window? I was blamed literally on a house. It was a giant, giant house. Uh, custom built, rich, douchey kind of guy. And um, he's, we got done, we did the first two windows in this entire house. And we stopped and said, um, hey, we're seeing scratches on these windows. He goes, you scratched the glass. No, no, no. It was already there. He goes, it was already there. Blah, 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 blah. Well, in our defense, we didn't wash the rest of the windows because we stopped. We found scratches. We bring it up. All of the other windows that were still dirty that we didn't touch were still scratched. So we got out of that one. But he instantly blamed us. Those scratches were never there. I was here every day. I would have known that. You didn't. You didn't know that because your windows, all of them, all of them were scratched. We found one window in the kitchen that wasn't scratched. And he said he had to replace it because it got hit with rock, like a lawnmower rock. So we're thinking, because I didn't go through every window. It was a big house. But every single window we saw had scratches on it. So we think every single window in that house was scratched before he even knew that it was scratched. But you're the one that cleans the windows, right? Same thing with that. If you are the last person to give them something or feed something, or if you use chemicals and something happens, well, guess what? You are going to be blamed for it. So you have to just be proactive. And I'm not trying to paint an awful picture. I'm just saying, keep an eye out. You have to be, you know, you have to understand what's going on or the possibilities going on so you can kind of be proactive on it. So that's one thing. Don't give them treats. Dog will still like you if you just pet it. Okay. I'm telling you. Um, Kind of something that goes on that same um, lesson, if you will, is something that just happened to a customer or a, a, a buddy of mine's customer. And it ended up, wasn't anything to do with him, but what had happened was uh, the homeowner uh, had left one of the doors. He was trying to take the storms off of the window for his window cleaning techs. And the dog got out and ended up getting hit by a car. Now, to my knowledge, it needed surgery. It was super expensive, but I think it's doing okay. So I don't want to be morbid, um, but it was really bad. And the guy, he was an older guy. His wife, they had one car for the house. They're both retired. She had the car. No one was home, so they had to bring him out. The dog's bleeding all over the car. It just ended up being a really awful situation. If that went back to the tech leaving the door open, guess what? Guess who gets hit with the fine? Or guess who tries to sue them for the medical bills? Or guess who... There are so many things. And with that is, is, is leaving a door open, if there's animals in the house, or leaving gates open. I see this. It just happened at my house a couple days ago. I got dogs that are off-leash dogs. They don't care. But my back door was left open. Back gate was left open by our true green dude. Now, if my dogs would have gotten out, gotten killed, gotten hurt, and I had medical bills... I'm probably, I'm not because I'm not that person, but they could possibly be uh, gone after for medical bills. You left my gate open. And because of that, because of the negligence of leaving the gate open, my dog was injured. Like you have to understand how courts work. If negligence is there, and I'm not a lawyer, I'm just a guy with the mic. But if negligence is there, then you can be held liable. And that sucks. That sucks as us. You know, it sucks that it can always come back to us. But again, being vigil, understanding that it could happen, uh, actually helps you understand how to kind of mitigate it before it even happens. So definitely don't leave uh, gates open. Don't leave doors open. Don't prop anything open. If a cat is in a room, go in the room, close the door because cats like to run and hide. 
I also have a story on that now that I'm thinking about it. It's not anything I even planned for, but we had a customer one time call just livid. And she said, you stole our cat. I said, what? She said, you stole our cat. I know our cat got out and jumped in the back of your truck and you took him with you. Uh, what? I have no idea what's going on. Like, I'm trying to figure out. Like, she thought that because she didn't see the cat, that the cat had gotten out, somehow got into our truck, and because our truck was out in the driveway, got into the back, because somehow when we opened the door to the back, we have a cap on the particular truck that was there, the cat jumped in, hid, and we stole her cat. Now, mind you, about four hours later, she found it. It was hiding because people were there. It was scared. It was sleeping under a bed or something. She called and apologized. But this chick tried to blame us for stealing her cat. Now, if you think stuff like that can't happen, it definitely does. I, you know, hey, we're stopping the truck right now. I'm going to get on the phone with the crew. Let me check. They haven't, you got to the next job. They haven't done this. They haven't, we checked. There's no cat in there. We've emptied the entire truck. There's nothing. I just don't think that it could have happened. I'm terribly sorry. You know, none of your doors were, were left open. We don't prop doors. We don't prop windows. None of that stuff. Like we would know if there was a cat that had gotten out, like, escape passes and she just was absolutely couldn't believe she was going to the better business bureau about us stealing her cat and everything else i tried to calm her down as much as possible but as all of you know sometimes people cannot be calmed down it just is a fact sometimes they can't sometimes they just want to vent and they're mad and they're frustrated they don't know what else to do and that's totally understandable i get it but chick we didn't steal your cat we didn't steal your cat that's another th case where you think it can't happen. Never in a million years would I ever, ever, ever think that somebody would blame us for stealing a cat. But anyway, it happens. So don't leave gates open. Don't give them food. That's a big one. One of the do's, though, one of the words of wisdom is making the people feel special, making your clients feel special. Now, I'm not talking about like, hey, you're looking good today. That's cool, too. But when you go into a customer's house, and I'll tell you a lot of the elderly, I have a soft spot for that. A lot of the elderly, they don't get up. They don't do a lot. So when you come there, they want to talk to you. They want to be so involved because they're lonely. They watch Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, and their stories all day long. It's all they do. Once a week, maybe they get to go somewhere and do something. You know, their friends are all kind of gone, and it's very, very tough. Very, very tough with the elderly. And a lot of us get frustrated. A lot of us get to that point where we're like, I'm just trying to work. Like, I, I'm just trying. And everybody can play, oh, that little old lady was following me around. But I'm telling you right now, I've gotten huge referrals from people that I just made feel special. I had a guy one time, great guy. We would go there. He had us there more than anybody should uh, have us. Well, it wasn't absurd, but it was a lot more than a normal house that size. And it was because he was lonely. I know it was because of his lonely. So we always, always, always slotted a lot more time than normal because I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to do everything. Well, he's talking about how I really liked our logo and, you know, and he likes how we're always dressed sharp. I brought him a t-shirt one time and I know it sounds so dumb. It was an $8, you know, our shirts are like eight bucks, screen printed, one color, one, uh, one screen. Easy. I brought him a shirt and you could have seen this guy light up and how excited he was. I say, hey, I know you always uh, compliment us, and uh, I thought uh, we'd make you one of the team. And I gave him the shirt. And I'm telling you, this guy was to the the, the 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 edge of tears, the edge of tears. This guy was so happy that there must have been a club or something that he had. We had three people call within the next week that had said that he sent us over. Like he went out of his way to send us stuff. So if you're doing nice things, it shouldn't just be because you're being nice. It should just be because. We made his day. We made his day every time we were there, and that's pretty awesome. That, that's legitimately awesome in itself. But if you think it's a waste of time, that shows you it's not. We had three people. Now, mind you, they were all three smaller houses. We didn't make a million dollars off of it, but for the $8, $7 shirt that we gave him, sure as heck made enough money. And we literally made his day. We made his day. And that's what I'm talking about when you can make them feel special. Um... Anytime that you see any type of opening for that, definitely do that. Uh, we had a lady one time who uh, we got to her house and she uh, was sad. It was her dog or her cat. 
not to go back to that, had died. Uh, they had to put her to sleep the day before, so she wasn't doing very good, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, when we went back, uh, I sent her a bouquet of flowers and just said, sorry for your loss, blah, blah, blah. You know, that kind of thing. It wasn't an ad. It literally was just, I'm sorry for your loss, the USI team. Like the, the, the you know, your name or whatever, XYZ team. And um, it just, she called, she wrote us a two-page letter in a card, sent all of the guys that were on the job a uh, Starbucks card. She didn't have to do that. We just really just saw she was not having a good day. It was a little bit of something from us. Her thing was that we were so far removed from having to do that that it was really, really special to her. It was just a little thing. It was just a little thing that we sent out. So making somebody feel special is not only going to make you feel good, but it helps solidify you as an awesome company. So make them feel special. Uh, another one is to be friends with your competition. Now, as a new guy, if you're new, listen, I know in your brain you're like, I'm not going to be friends with old Don, old Steve. Those guys a jerk. I listen. I knew of people who were such strong competitions with other window cleaners that they would pass each other, and guys, they, uh, he called them, uh, I forget what it was, honey bun or something. He called them honey buns. And it was because the guy must have like had a box of them. He must really like them. Every time they drove by him, the guy would throw a honey bun in his truck. <laughs> like, yes, there, that exists. But um, the being friends with your competition is huge you don't think it in your brain now and i'm not saying call them up and say oh uh, yes i am a customer and i would like a a bid because a lot of you want to do that don't do that you're wasting their time they're not going to be very happy but what it is is every time i find out that there's a new guy in town or around or anything i'll call him up and say hey hey my name is jersey from xyz window cleaning i just wanted to call and say what's up you're new to the area welcome to the hood man oh uh yeah hey cool i did i love to hang out with you you know uh, tell you how the market is and, and, you know, talk sometime. A lot of times they kind of are a little hesitant. I'll keep on them and I want to meet every single one of them. I want them to understand. I want every one of those companies to like me. Why? Is because if anything ever comes up, they will think of me before anybody else. A new guy's coming in, you have say 10 window cleaners around you. All of those 10 know you, but none of those 10 know each other because they're not doing that. Guess what? You have 10 allies who really like you because you took the time to just say, what's up? There's enough glass out there for everybody, right? You're hustling. You're already farther. You've already started the race years ago. They're not catching up. All it does is just show them that, you know, you're friendly. You're not taking anything. And I'm telling you, it comes back to you tenfold. I've had people give me businesses. Now, this guy that I saw all the time we actually had he would show up to the route on the same day as like a thursday or something and we'd always be there at the same time so you know we'd wave to him wave to him and every time i started talking to him hey you got to come up and uh, come in our office you know i'll buy you lunch sometime this was a uh, town over and uh finally the guy uh he you know slowly says okay right, you know what i'm gonna be up there uh let's meet uh, you know you've been trying to buy me lunch uh, whatever so I do buy him lunch. He goes through my thing. He's blown away by our operation. He's a small guy. He does lawn care and window cleaning. So don't think this was a multi-million dollar company. But at the end of that, I bought him lunch. I just said, you know, I just always wanted to say, hey, you know, on another level, we're all people, you know, we're, we're in the same area. It's nice to know who we are. Just talk, you know, legitimately talk. I didn't talk business with him. If he asked questions, I'd show him. I'd show him equipment. I'd show him all the stuff in my shop. I'm fine with that. But I never was like, hey, what about you? What are your, that's, I'm not, this isn't two-sided. I want this to 100% be just about meeting the person. At the end of the conversation, he goes, listen, I will never be to your level. I said, well, that's, that's not, that's not a level. You can be wherever you are and you're happy. He goes, you know, I, I want to give you all of my customers because I know you'll take care of them. And then that gets me, that frees me up to be able to just do this lawn care thing. I just want to do that. I'm just tired of doing both. And I know that you'd take the Oh, okay. I said, well, what do you want money-wise? Nothing. I just want you to take good care of my customers. I've had them for a long time. And he gave me his whole route. He gave me his whole route. Now, does that ever going to happen to anybody ever? Probably not. Probably not. That was pretty epic. And it wasn't a million dollar route, but it was a route. Remember, I just said we saw him in the same plaza every single time we were there. So guess what? We just added all those extra jobs under our route, made it stronger. We made more money because of it. 
But something like that gets them to know you. I've also had people where I was in a bind and said, hey, uh, I need a water fed pole for tomorrow. Mine broke, mine stole, it was stolen, whatever it is. I've had height issues where we were on job and we didn't have enough height. This was earlier, earlier on, before I did uh, even work for WC, before WCR even existed, mind you. And I talked to guys that I met and they're like, yeah, 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 grab it. I got a 54. You can come grab that and use it and just bring it back when you're done. Literally, competition. They're helping me. On that same side, I've had a lot, a ton of people who call me and say, hey, Jersey, I got this project coming up next week. We're short-staffed. I know I'm not going to do it in the time allotted. Do you have anybody? I say, yeah, you know, definitely we can shoot you over a guy or two. We got some time. We could do the whole crew. Let's, you know, what we'll do is we'll reschedule a week and kind of make it work so we're all good. And they're paying you for that. And they're paying, you know, for subbing and stuff. I've had people send me jobs, complete jobs. I've had complete buildings. I've subbed uh, strings of banks and um, other jobs where they're in my city or closer to what I do. The guy's just maybe out of my area a little bit. And he goes, hey, I'm not going to drive all the way down. You want them? We'll sub them out to you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Sometimes they take a cut off the top real small, you know, $5 a job or something because they're doing the paperwork, which is awesome. And you do the work. Like that kind of thing works back and forth all the time. So being friends with the competition, it's so important. I think that I've even done full episodes on just that. On just being friends with the competition. So uh, definitely go check that out. But they're, they're, they're huge. Being friends, there's so many benefits to it. And it also doesn't create... Because I had two dudes in my area. Uh, one of them passed away. Um, and the other one just wouldn't give me the time of day. I tried to meet them for, they were OGs. Like I came in, so they didn't really like me because they thought I was trying to steal their, this guy's going to try to learn all my secrets, but it was a one man show. You know, we were running employees and crews and all that other stuff. And eventually we were much, much larger and multiple times their, their company. And I feel like they were a little bitter, but I just couldn't get them. I couldn't meet them. And that's cool. But the awkwardness you feel with that is the reason I'm friends with everybody else. Try to be friends with everybody else. And especially if you are the OG in the area or you've been doing it for even a year or two, somebody's new, they're going to look up to you and just be like, wow, it was really nice that dude reached out. So do that. If you're friends with the competition, tell me down below. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to know. Another big words of wisdom is do give a multiple house discount. This one sounds weird, but when you're in a neighborhood or somebody asks or you're in even a cul-de-sac or a gated neighborhood or somewhere you know has next door, I always say, listen, your price is this, but if you can get four of your friends together on the same uh, neighborhood to do it, I'm going to knock $50 off a house or whatever it equates to, depending on your area. I'm going to do all that. I'm going to get, I tried to give individual discounts too. I've said, um... I'm going to take X amount off each house or for every house you get, I'll take it off your house. No, no, no. Give it to everybody. Every single time. I've never had somebody take the full discount themselves. But the reason is, is that if you could do four houses in one neighborhood, you don't leave the neighborhood. You got a whole day worth of work and it more than pays for the convenience, the ease. And guess what? You just picked up four new clients. Somebody else sold those jobs for you. You're going to pay for the jobs in the beginning part anyway. And Every single time that they book, they get together and they call together. I have a bunch of neighborhoods like that where I get a call from one person. It's always the ringleader, right? Hey, uh, it's uh, Dan over at, uh, you know, Lake Michigan, blah, 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 blah. Uh, We're ready to get our houses done again. Uh, Doris didn't want it this time, so we got six for you. All right, we'll we'll plan a day. We're out uh, two weeks. We got a full day. Uh, we'll be there. It'll be a little bit longer. We'll start with yours or whatever. Oh, hey, actually, uh, Johnny wants his done first, if that's possible. Yeah, absolutely. We'll work it around. We'll get it done in one day, so we're out of your guys' hair. Like, boom. We've had it before. We're so thick in there that we left our truck parked in one driveway, and we're doing the other neighbor right next to them because one guy got done before that. We're finishing up on the one house. We do the guy right next door. We just walk next door. They don't care because they're out there talking anyway. They knew all this was coming. Like, that is awesome. So make sure to bring it up. If they're in a neighborhood, bring it up. And say, hey, if you can get anybody else out there, we'll give you a 10% discount uh, if you can get up to four people. Whatever. People are super stoked on that. And it gets more people. And then they all call together and they help schedule. Because now you got four people 
one of the four people, you're four times more likely for somebody to be like, I got to get my windows done. You guys want in? It's amazing. Amazing. And the last one, words of wisdom from uh, an OG or uh, somebody at least has been in the industry for a while is don't burn yourself out. Now, this one is one of the hardest lessons for you to learn because you're going to run into a burnout about five years in where you've been there, you've done that. Five to seven, you got that, like, they call it a seven-year itch. It's just like, this is boring. I've done it. Uh, big job, I've gotten them. You know, new jobs, I've gotten them. New areas, I've gotten them. Been there, done that. You got to keep yourself excited. However that means to you, that's different. But keep yourself fresh and don't burn yourself out. Because if you burn yourself out, there are a lot of people who don't come back from that. A lot of people. So be careful. Don't burn yourself out. And as, like, a bonus one, uh, words of wisdom, order your supplies from me. Uh, no, truly though, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. My number is 862-312-2026. That is a cell phone. Save that number. Put it in your thing. I want to be your guy. I want to be a rep, right? Order through me. It's awesome. All you guys that order, man, I, I, I say this and I can't be so sincere all the time because you think it's fake, but it is genuinely the reason I exist is because of all you people who do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This week's code is going to be, um, let's see, uh, toilet. There you go. Uh, that's this week's code. It's going to get you 5% off if you order through me. Don't do it on your own. Don't go and order and then call me after the fact. Tell me if you're texting me, say, yo, it's in my cart. Address is the same, cart ending in 1234. And the code is toilet. Put it out like that. That's everything I need. I can run it for you. It's just as quick as pushing one button and making the order go through because I can see it in your cart. Just make sure you're logged in. And it means the world to me. It really, really does. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, go out there. Don't use a client's bathroom. Biggest words of wisdom. Tell me down below. If you're on YouTube, make sure to comment. I really do appreciate that. Go subscribe to all of my channels too. That really does help in Instagram, Facebook, and all that. And most importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.